Hello, welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. This is the first one of the day in the world. Yeah, what the fuck is good, y'all? It's your boy Bugs back with the Full Circle Podcast. I got a real scumbag in my living room. What's scumming, guys? <laughs> Who are you, brother? What do you do? Where are you from? I'm Scumbag Rick. I'm a professional scumbag from Gloucester City, New Jersey. Now, some might ask, how can you professionally be a scumbag? I won't tell you. Because <laughs> there's only one. You ever seen <laughs> you ever seen the memes where like a of his like three girls and you're like, guess what city they're from? And every time people type Gloucester City. <laughs> That's what Even me. Even me. That's Even so me. great. I've actually I've actually shared one of those posts and said Gloucester City and quite the controversy was stirred up on Facebook. Yeah, especially if you're from there, they're probably like, damn. They're like, but you was eating my butthole last week. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I deleted the comment. <laughs> yeah, why? All right, so I guess we should start there. Why the fuck are you always in Facebook jail? Like, what are you saying? Butthole, but, st- butthole stuff? Really? Facebook jail. They, they're just so, their algorithm is just crazy. Like, once you're in there, someone you're will be in like, there. Some, <coughs> someone will be like, uh, uh, something about people stabbing me in the back or something. I was like, "Nah, you got, you got, you got, you got to stab them in the leg or something, something crazy." And boom, you can't uh, say yeah, stab. It's not, it's not like yeah. It's and I mean, I've had people comment to me, "Go kill yourself," and then I respond, "I'll punch you in the face." Boom, and you get blocked. You and get, I got that's, flagged. That's, and I, I challenged it like this person told me to go kill myself. See, see, bullying seems to be completely okay. Maybe it's because he told me to do it to myself, and I told him I would do yeah. this to you. Maybe that's what it is. I doubt it. Man, fuck Zuck. <laughs> Don't ban me again. But I got multiple Facebooks, and and it's crazy <laughs> because I've said some way worse off the wall shit that I didn't get banned for. I'm like, maybe uh, that's... Some, there are some videos videos I've seen on that shit where I'm like, yo, get, like, I've reported videos. Like, dude, the fuck am I doing reporting videos? That means that it's fucking some bad shit on there. Yeah, like, I see people get their heads blown off, cut off and shit. Mm-hmm. I actually got, I had a whole Facebook page called Scum's Life where I was just posting, like, media, content, funny shit. And I was with, I was with my boy Basil. And we went to uh, we went to Walmart. He was selling a bunch of phones he had, and I'm recording. I'm like, "Yo, you know what it is? You know how we scum, and we out here selling <laughs> stolen phones. Hit us up if you wanna uh, if you wanna hang out with us and You're steal phones, joking. or you got a phone we can steal." And that <laughs> shit took off. That shit got like fifty thousand views. Whatever people are. People were commenting, they, like, they thought it was dead serious, like, we were actually stealing phones. They were like, look at this fucking dirty little heroin addict, <laughs> and, and fucking low lives. And then there's, then there's the, the other, the big tough guys that drive the trucks, they're like, I wish you'd try to steal my phone, you'd be buried in my backyard. I'm like, oh, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Tough Guy that lives in Nevada, make sure I don't come to your fucking neighborhood which is one house in 500 acres looking like herds of cowardly dogs <laughs> house and shit like sorry i'll never come around you probably i probably won't either because i don't buy meth so <laughs> but yeah people took that shit everything's way math. too seriously it's everything's meth everything dude everything's math everything everything is math ma- math meth and, <laughs> you know it's, it's math and meth dude people are fucked up Fucking yeah. um. So yeah, so the scumbag. Where does where does where does the scumbag? Why isn't it douchebag? Why isn't it dickhead? Why isn't so, so it? I'm from I'm from Gloucester City, and I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this. Um, in other towns, people look at people from Gloucester. They're like Gloucester City people are scumbags. It's like the stereotype that I grew up with, and you know. A lot of people do act with questionable behavior in the city I'm from, and I can never, I can never, I can never doubt that. You know, maybe it's because of just just the environment. Mm-hmm. But it's like 
when you grow up in Gloucester City, you're never really given a chance. It's like people are just, you're just, you're just labeled as a scumbag. I moved there when I was like 13, 14. That kind of references to the meme that I saw. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I moved there when I was 13, 14, and and it was definitely a new world. It was a new world, and I grew up there. And you know that's that's where I'm from. You know I can't I can't shit on the place that I mm-hmm. that I grew up at. I can't say oh fuck that place. Like I grew up there. That's, so you put I, it on your back. I am a that's, scumbag, that's bitch. What, exactly. That's what made me. I've been called a scumbag yep. by police. You know I've had I've had police call me scumbag, heroin addicts when I was like 18. I never did heroin. Man, you don't do drugs. Never, like, you never, know, like no, I don't even crazy. smoke weed right now. And it's like right now. But, like, it's it's crazy because, like, being called that shit, like, I've had, like, some really eye-opening, like, experiences, plenty induced by acid. (laughs) But uh, a lot of it's, like, you know, like, what gives someone the right to call someone else a scumbag? When nobody's shit doesn't stink, you know? It's, like, in a way, we're all scumbags because we all do some things that others might view as questionable so it's like fuck it and i started the movement started making shirts me and my friends used to always call each other scumbags like growing up and she yeah you fucking scumbag what are you doing come over smoke a blunt whatever match up da, 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 da. and it's just it just became a lifestyle from like 18 to like now i'm 25 i started scum- yeah so you like you take it as a term of endearment you flip it yeah, that's, exactly. That's literally what I what happened to me growing up because like I was, I was the wigger because I wore big clothes and everybody tried to call me B Red, so my friends started calling me B Red Jeezy, and they flipped it because you know B Red from Malibu's yeah. Best Wanted, so they flipped it and I was wearing big shirts because I was um, fucking chunky. I was wearing, I wore right. shirts in the pool and shit. Like I say that all the time, but um, that's a, and I told you earlier I was walking in with like. 15 dime bags of weed selling them for homeroom but there was more to it with wearing the baggy clothes even though it was the style at that time with the big white tees and the big shirts and shit like that but people hated on it so like when they they called me a wigger when i was wearing a large i was like okay i'll wear a double xl fuck you and then it went to triple xl i was like i'm not i'm not growing i'm still five three (laughs) but i'm wearing a five fucking uh triple xl go down to your knees because i could fucking Harlem Shake and throw it over. You know those big fans that they have in the gym? I put my big ass shirt over there and I looked like a big old Teletubby. There you go. Like a Teletubby. There you go. See, that's the way to do it. It was vibes because there was no AC in the hallways. And and it's like people people are so quick to like judge you because they don't understand you or because they view you as something not like that. I relate to that like crazy. I embraced it. I embraced the shit that they were talking. You know what I mean? And I was like, okay, like you don't even know me. You don't know that. And that's the one, the main thing that I heard when I turned 18, like, when I went to the couple house parties, because we were all older and understood that, like, fuck it, we're all partying and raging. Every single person was like, you're actually pretty cool. <laughs> the fuck do you mean I'm actually pretty? Yeah, bitch. Story of my life. You never fucking Story spoke to me. You never Story gave me. Life. You heard from this person and that person, and it's like, it's weird how shit is, and that's how... That's how it is growing up as a kid. That's how it is in every town and every aspect. And like Gloucester City to Marlton, bro. Like completely different cities. Yeah. Same exact thing happens. Exactly. In the same that. exact um, description and category as to far as far as what judgment is and rebelling. And I think humans naturally have that rebellion in them. So whatever your rebellion is, everyone's done it. It's like when your parents are overprotective, the, da- the, the daughter or the son, they wind up raging. You know, mm-hmm. they wind up going and doing crazy shit. More than if they would have let allowed up, to do what they want. And kids who grew up through crazy shit are like, fuck that. I don't want any crazy shit. And they, they wind up. Be- it's weird. It's like it's yeah. a weird. It's a weird uh, paradox. A paradigm paradox is it's, as far as that goes. A controlled but, environment will never do well to someone that doesn't want to be controlled. Mm hmm. And, and 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 yeah, like uh, going along. No one wants to be controlled. No, so I. Uh, uh, some people want to be controlled. Some people, <laughs> some people would rather be told. You might rather be, right. be given the direction than to lead themselves. You're right. But you know, there's nothing wrong with that, in certain in some aspects, you know. Mm-hmm. But 
a lot of shit, like, yeah, I was made fun of in school. You know, I've had a missing tooth since I was 10 years old. Mm. I've had, I've had, I've been in self-contained classes, which is, like, basically special ed. So people call me Sped Bob and shit, <laughs> like... Like I, I, yo, a lot of a lot of a lot of kids like laughed at me and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, they were the first ones to pay fifty and eighth. <laughs> <laughs> they were the who's retarded now. And that's how it went, dude. And that's the thing too. Like all the time when I was uh, when I was like the freshman, sophomore in Marlton, halfway through junior year, I'm selling all this weed every day before homeroom. And all these people, like, they have no idea I'm walking around with, like, wads of money in my fucking pocket. That's, that's the way that's how it's supposed and, to be, guys. And they're like, that's how it's supposed to be. Don't let no one, don't let them, don't, don't flash don't the bag. That, that, that one of their friends is the one getting the weed that they're smoking after school. Like, and what's weird to me is, like, that dynamic of, like, all these white kids calling me a wigger, but they're the ones blast in like rap music and wearing fitted hats and shit like that like i never started wearing hats until recently because my hair is so fucking long yeah and at this point i need to like keep it wrapped up as much as possible but like the the dynamics of like of the judgment of people that that we go through as kids whether it's like public school or like a kid just enduring something going to a fucking playground bro Kids are mean. People are fucking mean, bro. Yeah, yeah. So the only way to battle that is to rebel against it because, like, at the end of the day, you did nothing wrong. So, like, do you physically beat them the fuck up or do you just, like, take it on the mental chin and mm-hmm. assess yourself, reassess, and be like, yo, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. I Like, I am who you say I am. If you want me to be a scumbag, I'll be a scumbag. I'm not, but I will flip that title. And show you what a scumbag, oh, a scumbag is. Scumbag. You know what I I'm mean. <laughs> but yeah, no, exactly. Like but that is what it is. Yeah, ki- kids, are, kids are mad judgmental. It's like, you know, everybody, people. It, it goes along with like it, people projecting their own insecurities, mm-hmm. and it's like you think about Eight Mile. And I don't know why I had to well, bring this that m- judgment up. It's like I am who you say I am. That one Eminem. Song. Eminem. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that's what reminded me. But Eminem. You know, in his final rap battle, he was going to, he used everything that dude Papa Doc was about to say about him and flipped it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a fucking trailer that park bum our, and That shit. imprints in our age group, our, what, our what are you going to say so, about so what you, much? If, if you, if you, if you, if you stand <laughs> on, if you stand on the darkness mm-hmm. that, that you live with. You just face can, it. What can, what can people say about you? Like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, bro. Yeah, I fucking pick up cigarette butts off the ground and fucking smoke them <laughs> with my nose. Now they can't make fun of you for it because you, you embrace it. You make you do it like it's cool. You make it look easy to be yourself, and that's how it should be. Mm-hmm. And that's how it should be because, like... Because you already battled it. No one can beat you up like you can. There's a, You shouldn't follow a template of the way you should live your life unless it's your own template. Because, mm-hmm. like, it's very specific to everybody. That's why having the certain people you keep around you is very crucial because even though what these people are giving you for the time being is rewarding with dopamine or money or anything, if you don't look at the like the larger picture as far as to where it's going to lead you to with connection and connections, then that's where you feel betrayed in regards to relationships and friendships. So, like, it's not even about miscommunication at some points because you can be completely upfront. Like, yo, like, we fuck with each other. This is where we're going to go. This is this is the show we're going to throw. This is the song we're Mm going to make. This is the art we're going to paint. Like, when you get to that agreement, a lot of times once it's painted, our expectations, like, expect another painting. Exactly. Like, on deck. And that's, that's what's weird is, like, everyone does it. Is it, like... Why aren't you painting anymore? You know what I mean? And once we get there, that's where that, that bitterness comes in. And that's where I'm, what I'm saying is you have to understand that, like, the bigger picture. Understand if that painting that you're painting with this person is even going to get hung up on any wall. Can't paint, will can't that paint painting, rich pictures with yeah, portraits. Yes. And will that picture have any fucking value to you once it's painted? Yeah. You need to think about that before you paint pictures with people. Thanks. And that's why I'm very picky about, you know... The colors that I show certain people 
and things like that. And um, that's what I'm saying about vibes, and that's what I, we were talking about in the kitchen about mm-hmm. you. There's just a genuine vibe there, and it's it's easy to pick up when somebody has a story that they're willing to share and tell and do it in the right way. And mm-hmm. like I didn't expect to start the podcast like this. I thought we were going to be joking, talking right, about right. It, it, slashing. It did, it did get mad like serious. <laughs> and it got like philosophical and shit. I only came here to ask you for cigarettes and then I ended up on a podcast. Like, <laughs> that's funny. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And, and that's what's weird about the universe. You said you thought about when am I going to do a podcast? And the next day I was like, yo, let's do a podcast. It happened so many times. Last year I was thinking, I was like, Someone was talking about concerts. Asked me if I've been to one. I was like, I was never been to a concert. And then a week later, I ended up getting in the Ghostface Killer concert Mm-mm. at uh, in Atlantic City. Manifestation is a real thing, dude. Yeah, people, pe- you, you have to believe it. You have to like. I'm not telling you what to believe, but like, like the facts are there. The evidence is there. Read some books about the law of attraction, the secret, all that shit. Like you speak things into existence. You say you want to do something, go out there and put in the work, and it's like the universe comes to your aid in certain ways. And sometimes everything doesn't happen the way you want it to happen, but trust in your process and and things fall into place. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what what happened to me as far as what I said when I took a step back and then like legitimately didn't want to fuck with anybody and then there were just certain people around me that just happened to be there like i thought i was alone but then that when i look back on it now i realize that there's certain people that were like that never left here every week you know what i mean no that popped up like people that were stayed and then people that popped up you know what i mean and it's a very small number but when you think you're alone, you're really not. You know what I mean? You actually, when you t- reassess things. And then there's moments in your life when you get down and there's no one to talk to. And that's that's what you were saying. That's yeah. where it comes to you. That's where that's you where really need to look in the mirror and realize what you want to do. But then there are other moments when you got to like be like, yo, I do have some motherfuckers in my corner. And yeah, when like when, support system when, when and you, all when that. You, yeah, when you understand that, that's when you realize there's something more to fight for. And then... The thing that I saw is like from the ciphers and everything I've done, you could say that I had like a leader responsibility and I partied through it instead. Like that's like the hindsight of how I look at it. And you can put the blame on as many people as you want, but I've always taken accountability as to why Yo, why I was where I that's was. That's a good conversation when mm-hmm. you spoke about that leadership. Because mm-hmm. like when you're a leader, bro, like a lot of people... Like you could be a leader of yourself, right? But if you're a leader and other people look up to you, then you can't you give influence up. Like them. You can't. Not only can you, you not can't. give up, <laughs> like, yeah. but there's certain things that you can do that you could be like, I could handle this. That people around you might not be able to. Mm-hmm. Like, like you could you could fucking party your ass off, make an album, and do a bunch of shit, and do like acid and whatever, mm-hmm. and and still stay afloat then there's those that you influence that might try the same thing and then they end up just getting drunk all the time they don't yeah. fucking yeah. it's it's hard it's hard being it's it's really hard being a leader because like, it does seem like that it does seem like i mean i'm a stoner i get stoned all the time but it does seem like we party but like that's a real battle that like if i've had as far as drinking goes because i like i was telling everybody knows i want a six pack and i'm right there actually i lost a lot of weight but the reason that I don't have the body that I want is because of drinking and shit. And because when I drink, it turns into a, everything I do, I binge. I make music, I drink, I mm-hmm. eat. I, if I'm eating cookies, I'm eating 30 cookies. If I'm yeah. drinking milk, I'm drinking chocolate milk. Give me a smoothie, you know. Like, it's like that. It's like, If I'm making beats, I'm making six beats. If I'm yeah. doing anything like that this i'm doing a podcast where we can talk for an hour two hours you don't, you don't just want one beer yeah, i want to yeah i want to kill seven birds with that stone so that's kind of just how i look at it and that's what it is with alcohol too so like when i do that it's like i wake up the next day hungover hangovers are so fucking real and when you do that you you don't want to work out and then when no. you don't do that you're like fuck this no, i just want to eat shitty of- then you eat shitty and when you eat shitty you're mm-hmm. like all right, let's drink again and party again. That's how I'll get my shit back up to energetic levels. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. That's People think that because I'm a rapper and I do all this shit that, like, I'm partying all the time. And, like, no, like, 
I go hard, but I only do that now on occasions where Correct. I'm doing shit. You know what I mean? And I'm always doing shit, so that's kind of what's fucked up. <laughs> so, so like it's like a it's like a pat on my back, like oh you're doing something. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, you know? and then is, I know I know they only see the tip of the iceberg. It's why I got a DUI. Yeah, because I was celebrating. I was right. like, yo, I did what I wanted to do in two weeks. I know I can do this shit for real. Partied and got a fucking DUI, and that's how I got stuck. You know what I mean? So now that I'm back and I'm mobile, like I have, I have the ability to do all this different material all the time, regardless of the feedback it gets because of the algorithm being robotically taken over by advertisements. That's where we're at. You know what I mean? So until some shock value shit happens in my career or someone around us and they really connect the dots and see who connected what, it's going to be just me keeping on painting like we were saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to paint and I'm going to paint with the people who deserve the, the paint to be shared with. You right. know what I mean? That's, that's deep. That's very deep. Wow, that was a nice little chapter right there. Yeah, that was a nice. <laughs> we you're, dove right you're cool, into dude. it, bro. You're, cool, you. you're a cool guy. You're, you're awesome. You, no, you're you, the you, shit. <laughs> you, you actually inspire me. You do mm. like Same, a, dude. a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of things you talk about. It's like I feel right here. I'm like yeah, mm. like like it's like you're 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 a big reflection mm -hmm. of a lot of things that I go through and fucking it's just it's just it's just always amazing and and good to hear things that you've been thinking from mm -hmm. someone else yeah you know? dude that, i feel the same for as far as you go with just like uh not the character that right. scumbag is right but because like just what we just talked about how i knew that before you even told me i knew that that was like you embracing some sort of like yeah and flipping it you know what i mean and that's literally like I relate to that so much. So like the reflection that you speak of, it's it's literally vice versa. And that's what I'm saying. I don't do podcasts with anybody, dude. I do podcasts right. with people that I want to talk to and that I want to pick their brain on. And not only that, like I see a lot of of me and you with how, regardless of where you're doing it, who you're doing it with, you're doing it. You know what I mean? People aren't doing shit. There's yeah. nowhere to do shit. So if you can find somewhere to do shit in the pocket of where your pocket is, like if that's your eight ball corner pocket, fucking throw a show there, dude. Yo, yo, throw a make, show there. Make. If this is where you can do a podcast on your living room couch, then do the fucking do podcast on your living do room it. couch, motherfuckers. Dude, I know motherfuckers that record music in their car. In their car. In their I mean, car. I mean, we're the generation of bedroom studios and home studios, but... I mean, now we're at a point, yeah, recording in the car yeah. and shit. I mean, with the live takes with Coco Evolve, I'm trying to... We're we're trying to get a little more mobile and do that shit in the middle of the woods and stuff. But yeah. when there's no outlets, there's nothing to really connect to. Obviously, generators but and shit. If 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 the homies get a generator, we'll be raging on that. The homies we get out a there. Generator. We out there. Yeah. So, dude, what um, what really got you into making music? What's uh, what's your reason that you're um, a musician? See, like I started when I was fifteen. I started writing lyrics. And I just had this thing where I was like, yeah, I really think these are good lyrics, you know? And since 15, 16, I 17, 18, I was a writer. My flow, my delivery, and actually rapping was terrible, you know? But <laughs> I worked on it over the years, and I got way better at it. But, like, I don't know. Like, I just had this love for music. Like, I just knew it was there. I knew this was it. Uh, from the minute I started, and uh, it took a lot of a lot of life step backs, you know, having a child, and uh, that's not a setback, but you know, you know what I mean. Like it's definitely a deterrent when you when you think about it. Like you, nobody expects <laughs> yeah. to have a child at nobody a young wants age. to have a kid young. Um, Let's all be honest. Ain't nobody trying to no, deal with that. Being being like being in situations homeless at eighteen and shit. <laughs> Like sleeping on couches, sleeping on floors. Sleeping I wake on, up when I go, go back, back to, to sleep. sleep. Exactly. Can't put a bandaid over, a cut on your shoulder. Shit, shit bleed way, way too deep. deep. Like that was a big part of my life, like many times. And it's just the music always kept me going. Like through having a terrible day, I could write my way out of it. Mm -hmm. I could always write my way out of it, and then I come up with some art. And then I'm like proud of myself just reading that That's shit. That's a baby right there. Every yeah. song's a little baby, dude. Yup, yup. Being being a creator is just um, is just amazing. Mm -hmm. And they live like that's the thing. Like 
I, want, I make. There's a couple of reasons I make music. I want to connect with people. That's the main thing. I want to hug people. So when you make music, you perform the music, and not. It's not about being the center of attention. It's about being able to collectively gather the vibe wherever you are because it's every. It's different every yeah. time, and it's not the same song every time that gets people. It's not the right. same way you perform it. You're not in the same mood. Your key's not there sometimes with certain songs, so it's always different. But once you find that vibe and connect everything mm. that's the thing because then you just hug people and but the other reason making music whether it's digital or not like i'm assuming that digitally like the internet will always be there like obviously we're not going to be able to live forever to see the future yeah, but, but nobody wants to go to a digital concert in, no but but in your music it living forever like whether you have mad fans that listen to you and they show their kids or your family, your cousins. Or it's just your grandma. Anybody, one of them has like, in 150 years, this podcast clip of your great-great-granddad of him explaining what things were right, like. Right. I kind of look at living forever like that yes, now. Definitely. It like cements itself in the art, assuming that the internet stays up up forever yeah assuming we don't get taken over by robots yeah and wherever this goes but you see what i'm saying so like because i can't live forever and that's like the selfish thing that i make music for i don't make music selfishly to be the center of attention when i'm performing that's about hugging people i make music otherwise because like somehow consciously all Mm. these words that i'm saying like you said that you relate to just like i relate to yours and everybody does and especially with that last you could always spark you could always spark a fire in someone's soul yeah you know that's what it's about dude that's literally what it's about i had someone uh for that live take i did for coco of off i had someone inbox me and say like yo like i really felt this like i was going through a bad day and i i watched this shit and this shit meant a lot to me like you you That's through through amazing, music dude. to be there for somebody when when people might not be there for someone is the best like that's a lot. That's a big Everybody thing needs to a, know they can just talk, dude. Yeah, they can like, relate. Yeah, like I think people like I get DMs all the all week from just random people like and it's from people that have like 20,000 followers, which is whether it's real or fake, to people that have a hundred followers, sixty followers. I'll open every single message, mm. and a lot of the people are honestly just like, "Hey, what's up, man? I like your stuff." Oh, what's up, dude? Thank you so much. How are you? Where are you from? They tell me where they're from, and then from there we wind up having a, like an actual uh, friendship based yeah. off of this because we're asking because everybody's from some weird fucking place, and we just wind up figuring some shit out. Otherwise, it would just be like. You know what I mean? Like so, some people don't respond to the people that DM them. Like, yeah. Like I I know some friends of mine that have seventy seven of those red notifications on the app, mm. and I have OCD. If I have one notification yeah. mark on any, I'm opening that shit. I need to get it off of my. I got, I got like screen. nine. Uh, yeah, I can't do that. I can't do any of them. I'm super so, busy and. I'm I don't always though, reply like, right away, but I do reply. I do reply. Even if it's a like, day or two later when I see a message, oh, shit, I forgot to but reply. But it's, uh, really. it's 2000, uh, this time now, it's 2022, dog. You're not like, no one's going to tell me they don't see what, what they see. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's like, we are all fucking news anchors. We're all analysts. We're all detectives we're all scumbags we are all scumbags we're all everything right now dude we are all literally yeah we're all we're, we're at that spot in human history where we can figure out whatever we want about anybody that we know yeah. at any time whether it's from google facebook instagram any of these apps we can figure it out the dark web it's pretty crazy no it's not even the dark <laughs> dude we're dark the web is just there we're fucking dark. We invented this shit. Yeah, we're like the pioneers. Like a lot of, I feel like we've lived in a control society for a long time, and it's like the internet's really Get married giving people in eighteen, nineteen. If you don't go to the military, you're going into the industry. Yeah, you're working kids, at the coal mines. Moms at home making the food and shit. Yeah, like the fifties and shit. Like you'd study that. Now you're like we're in a we're in an age. Where you could really, 
and you've probably always been able to do it before, except it's a lot easier now. You could really do what you want to do with your life. And though you may experience trials and tribulations uh, along the way. Well, where we are can, in the world. You can do yeah, what you want to do in yeah. life and prosper. Where we are, yeah. If you want to sell t-shirts, you want to open up a clothing brand, there's outlets for that. You want to do music. Nowadays, like back then, you, you had to be around. signed to a label. You had to be signed to a label. And they would have to push your stuff. There was the radio, and that was it. You know, there's local, you could do like gigs and local gigs, but uh, now, like, you could really connect with someone all the way in Zimbabwe. And they'd yeah, be like, yo, I, I love be your talking music. to motherfuckers in Norway and shit like that, dude. You, you, there's it's no, you can only limit yourself. You can only limit yourself. And a lot of people, excuse me, a lot of people, Speeding. they see. They see, like, they think that because of their situations, Stop they can't the they can't do what they want to do. <laughs> like, up through the mic. Nah, you got a lot of people can't think. Oh, I don't. I might not have the money to start right now, or I might not have the time to start right now. And then people, some people, end up never doing it. Oh no, you can't do that. There's yeah. like, see, that's the, what we were talking about earlier was laziness too. Laziness is my biggest weakness because when I have some free time, it's like, um, because I create very quickly. Mm -hmm. So when I paint or make music or anything, it's just like, whatever's in my head, I paint because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dragging it out. I'm not doing what I want to make because then that turns into a weird process of, dragging and searching and digging that's very time consuming and that takes the creation away from me i'm not creating at that point at that point You're i'm working. like yeah so i have to just whatever i feel go right with that and that's why i create very quick so the thing about laziness with me is i'm lazy first of all because i'll make five things in an hour and then i'll be like oh my god those are all amazing but now I have fucking five other hours. What do I do now? Okay, I got a lot paint of cookies something. and milkshakes. You know what I mean? It's like, so like when, and then that's the other end. Like, all right, I don't have to make anything for like three hours because I know I can make five things in an hour. So it's like, it's a double edged sword of like laziness. Yeah. You know, so I constantly battle laziness. And that's why you guys see me drop so much shit because I battle that with just do this then. Yeah. Do a yeah. podcast then. Do a fucking reaction then. Do a live take. Do a cipher then. Do something. Do something. Like I, w- stop I wouldn't even. Shit. I wouldn't even consider that lazy. Laziness is when well, you're not no, doing I'm anything. I'm battling the laziness yeah. with that. Okay. Like you know what I mean? Because I want to be lazy, and and basically that's why I do everything too. Because I wake up like, dude, I don't feel like fucking rapping today. I don't feel like that. I feel like singing and dancing. So I'll make some fucking techno, singy, mm-hmm. dancey shit, deep house. That's the thing, too, about making every genre. So, like, how you're in hip-hop right now, that's what I was saying earlier, you're going to get to a point in a little bit when you're done producing that, and you're going to be like, how do these 808s sit for real? You know, like, that's what I was saying. How How is the shape of this room really masking how yeah. and what I want to make? How is the color of that light when, when- making me go to this vibe every time? Once Once you search, once once you, bit, once you go in a room... You know everything about a room. You're gonna go into the next room. Mm-hmm. You, you 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 go into it. it's like, but not when you're in that room. Not when you're stuck in that room, though. When when you're this yeah. is what I mean, though. So like I, I'm, what I'm all I'm saying is that like once you once you start to branch out, you like you have reasons to not be lazy. But like mm-hmm. I said, like that's an oxymoron because when you can do it all, like when I'm where I'm at, like I can't do it all. I'm still learning so much fucking shit every day. That's not what always. I'm saying. Forever. But that's that's the thing is like I'm always learning because I'm always doing different shit mm-hmm. and that's what keeps me on my toes. And Stepping out, you step out your comfort yeah. zone, and that's why that's why I keep creating so fucking much, and that's what battles the laziness. Because other than that, I would just be like, you know, rapping. Yeah, and and I stay. I'm always always busy, and sometimes like just having an hour to myself is like as mm-hmm. different, you know. But I've been learning, like, I've been learning, like, the business aspect of music and everything else and shirts. Business and it's sucks. like, it does. But sometimes you, you gotta learn that shit. You, you, 
people don't understand marketing is a way to get you have to market your 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 song is a product you know mm-hmm. and it's like a lot of people don't think about anything and they're just like there Let was me only just a, there was a my- small pocket of the internet where you didn't need to you know before the advertisements took over and what you needed to play on certain platforms to be seen in the algorithm or thrust into a higher percentage of people that follow you already see it so that's what I'm saying. That's why I was in that pocket of when the ciphers went viral. But I, I would they capitalize on it. I was a young bull. I wasn't in tune with really what the time was. Looking back, I should, I would have bought my mom fucking three houses by now. You know what I mean? That's r- the reality of it. And I, I wasn't on top of it. So now the only thing I can do is keep creating because I saw what was wrong with the business and the industry and how this shit is mm-hmm. going. And I'm kind of rebelling against paying for advertisements and shit yeah, like that. So yeah. so how we were talking about earlier, all that shit, it stays in your DNA as far as everything you do in life and in specific relationships or friendships and all that. We all have that rebel as far as not being wrong or incorrect, but about being done wrong. Yeah. You know, it's not about me being right or you being right. It's about everything and how it's been handled and the industry is not wrong for running advertisements and making their no. money as much as they can. No. But they are fucking wrong for making that when I post a picture that if I don't get a certain amount of likes in 30 minutes that 90% of my followers aren't going to see it. They follow me for a reason because they want to see it. They shouldn't have to follow me and click a little bell on top of that and then exactly. click yes text me when they post no they don't want text no, they just want they to just see want it. to see it in time and that's where shit got weird other otherwise the advertisements i get it but the algorithm control like that's kind of what i'm relaying to so so the way that i'm battling that is like okay i understand i have my look my sound i'm establishing that with like my live takes and and the podcast and ciphers and certain things i do but now I'm at a point where I'm like on the low can do some other shit and like really trigger the algorithm with the titles. Yeah. Like, like there's certain shit that I'll tell you afterwards that I, cause like I run like comedy accounts and shit like that. And I've gone viral with several of the things that I've posted yeah. and chopped together. So it is about what you post. You don't need advertisements. So it is still like the Wild West of yeah. the days that I'm talking about. It depends on what you're doing, and it basically all triggers off of shock value. I got a page called Scumbag you, News. And you just post all the scumbag just, shit. Like, just shit that I see in Gloucester, yeah, anywhere else. Yeah, probably like... Fights, <laughs> fucking fiends arguing. Uh, there, I, had to, I had a video, I still have it. I had a video of these guys that work at the gas station in Gloucester. We'll put it up right here. Some, we'll put it up right here. Hell yeah. They, they were beating some dude with a shovel. Be there, but like they were beating, like, and I asked him, like, why you do it? He's like, he was talking shit to me, buddy. If I talk shit to you, you want to hit me, right? I was like, I guess. They, I guess they, it's <laughs> America. I, I mean, at least he used the other end of the shovel. He didn't use the big metal part, mm-hmm. but you know, like shit that just follow scumbag news. It, it's great. I'm a sample that he was talking shit to me, but I'm a sample that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, and it's like because Gloucester City. I've seen the craziest things. Like when I moved to Market Street when I was 14, there was three fights on my block every week. Me, my dad, his girlfriend, my sisters, we would, we, we would hear, my dad would be like, yo, there's a fight, Bobby. Get the popcorn, get the chairs. We just sit out front. Watch some people fight. We've that's we, so that's kind of awesome. I'm not gonna lie, it's fucked up, but it's awesome. I've seen I've seen some I've seen uh I've seen I've seen a lesbian hit another girl with a cheesesteak. <laughs> I've never seen anybody. How'd you know she was lesbian? Um, see, that's questionable. But she had a girlfriend. <laughs> she lived right around the corner with her with her wife or whatever, and she was fighting with her, and she hit her in the face with a cheesesteak. I was so mad because it looked it was an arts deli cheesesteak, and they're like the best cheesesteaks around. Like you could you could have just punched her. Why waste a cheesesteak? You know, had them. I I remember they were fighting. They're fighting on their I block. I would fuck a cheesesteak up so bad. Yes, right now. they were they were fighting on their block, and one mm. threw their dildo at the other one, and that dildo was just in the street for like weeks. <laughs> There's this homeless guy named Tito. Damn. And he got knocked Someone's out. Someone's got to pick that up. Yeah. Who's yeah. gonna grab that? Yeah. 
Me, me but me when nobody's big old, looking. Big old plum. <laughs> no, nobody's looking. And then there, there's this dude, Tito, this homeless guy. He's always causing a ruckus. Like, he was funny as hell. And his girlfriend was, you know, maybe twice the size of him. He was like a skinny little white dude. Yeah, you know, she knocked him out cold. He was laying in the street. I've seen so many people of those would take videos. pictures of him and shit. Yo, I, I, I millions of stories, but I'm gonna just leave it at that. You want, you want to, well, you want to see some come to Gloucester? We'll put, all the videos you have, we'll post like two or three of them while you were talking. Yeah, about it. that little rant, you guys, I'm sure were watching what he was talking about. <sighs> Fucking um, yeah, Gloucester um. Where I grew up in Marlton, it was a lot of fake shit. No one, everybody would talk shit and then run away, pretty much type of thing. A lot of towns talk, are like that. Talk for talk until the teachers come, and then as far as after school and shit at parties, it was never a square up. It was always a sneaky punch. It was never, you know, stupid corny shit like that. Yeah, that that actually happens everywhere, but the ratio of how much it happens. Compared to how much real shit happens is always different. Um, yeah, there's never, there's rarely like, all right, meet me here and we'll do it like real quick. A know? lot of people like to embrace the image. There was a certain of being spot tough. in Collingswood in a pocket of group of people that were like, okay, we'll meet here and do it in Collingswood because like that's what happened with me one day. But then the thing about that is the second one person sees a fight, everybody wants to wind up fighting that day at a certain age. When you're like 14 to 17, 18, now 14 to 16, I'd say, that's when like other kids are like, I want to show off now because that kid got beat up and I could beat somebody up better. You know, like it's, it's really yeah. weird. It's really weird. I'm going to admit on primal, the podcast. primal shit. Yeah, very primal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to admit on the podcast, I was a pussy when I was 14. <laughs> and then around like the time I was 18, I was like, I got to prove myself. I didn't pick fights. 18, but that's I stopped when you, running that's from when you them. gotta stop. <laughs> that's when yeah. you stop at 18. Yeah, no, I, I was. My, my, my early 20s, 18, 19, 20, was just me being very dumb. I uh, had I had braces from like 14 to 17. So I like. I, I didn't have much confrontation. There wasn't anything really for me to avoid. So, like, but I made it a point, like, yo, because, like, if I got flicked in the mouth, bro, yeah. my lips were stuck to my braces. Like, I remember oh waking up with, I remember waking up with cotton mouth a few nights, like, because I started smoking when I was 13, and my dry mouth would be stuck to my braces when I woke up, bro, and I would have to literally, I know motherfuckers know what I'm talking about, fucking pull the, my lips that dried onto my braces off of it. Because I was stoned and had cotton mouth and fell asleep with my mouth open. Never had braces. <laughs> <laughs> and it stuck to my fucking teeth and sh or my lips stuck to my fucking braces and shit. And it was like some crazy weird shit, dude. That's like braces are a freaky thing, dude. So like that played a big role though, honestly. Like I would have definitely beat a lot of diff a lot of kids up. Yeah. Like, I would have started a lot of shit if I didn't have braces. Because <laughs> My dad is fucking nut ass, crazy motherfucker. Told me to walk around with a mouthpiece. He's like, dude, walk around with fucking a mouthpiece, dog, for like Be the smart. top and bottom jaw. Because like, smart. first of all, if you have an issue and you have braces, but they see you put a mouthpiece in, they're gonna be like, they're like, oh, he he's prepared. Yeah. So like, I get the logic behind it, but at the same time, I like. Because I had played football, so I remember what mouthpieces were like. And yeah. I was like, nah, dude. Sometimes like people really just want to fight you. Yeah. I'm not I've, good about most of my fights that I've like if been it's, in. If it's really going to be a fight, then it's going to be a fight. I'm not wearing a yeah, mouthpiece. Exactly. That's kind of how I looked at it. Most of my. Don't but he was hit. right. He was right. Yeah. You know? He, he was right, though. He was right about just keeping the mouthpiece. Most of my fights that I've been in but were I not fights that I've I probably would have started some fights if I had it, though, to be honest. Most of my fights that I've been in were not fights that I've picked, and you know. Oh yeah, I got snuck. All my fights, I got snuck. Every one. Yeah, growing up, growing up, being like fourteen, fifteen, and like being scared also wasn't the height I, I was. I started one fight. I started a few, but I, I had to. You know, I eventually be, got to this point where I was like, I'm never backing down from shit, <laughs> and and it it, it 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 transitioned to a point where one time, I went to go sell these two kids weed 
they wanted two ounces of weed. This guy pulled out a gun on me. He's like, yo, you trying to take this L? I looked at him in the eyes. I'm like, no. And then he, and I'm in the backseat of a car with my boy. And these two guys are in the car. The dude's looking at me. And I'm just making eye contact. But I wasn't even like trying to like look tough or nothing. I was kind of like smiling. Like You just be making those faces anyway. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like this. He's like, you want, you want to try and take this out? I'm like, no. He's staring at me for like five minutes. Then he looks at his boy driving. And he's like, man, look at me. And then at this point, I'm like, they're not equipped to use that gun. They're not prepared. I was like, you're going to have to shoot me if you want my shit. I was like, no, nah, we, we didn't even try to do that. Da, da, da. <laughs> We're bloods. They ended up giving me my shit back because I wasn't like, no. Like, no, I need, I got kids that I had to feed. Mm. Like, you're not taking my shit. And they gave me my shit back. And, you know, being, that that can be toxic, though. Like, being like, oh, I'm not scared oh, yeah, of nobody. Gonna, there's obviously going to be somebody who Cause, doesn't Because you're going to get your ass whooped sometimes. Even if you fight and, like, you're not, you, you can be not scared to fight. But unless uh, street unless, fights are different, yeah, yeah, I've been jumped plenty of times. I've been jumped at street times where are not the same. where I was with more people than the people jumping me, but I was the only one fighting. Learned from that. I learned from that. Yeah, that's that's corny. And that happened to me one time. Like it was one of the situations I got snuck, and I was like, "Oh, my friends are not." It wasn't about being snuck by one person. It was a situation where like they had beef with that person and the other two people standing there so it's pretty much an agreement we're like yo i'll fight him but if he doesn't fight yo then that's it but if i do fight like we're all fighting like not not them jumping him you're fighting their friends the two dudes that you guys been talking shit about the whole time because everybody thought that i was the one talking shit but i had nothing to do with yeah. it so i got thrust in the middle because i was the white kid and so when i got snuck from behind and i realized like while i'm scrambling and i realized they're just standing there i was like right then and there like in the fight i was like oh can't trust any friends like i was like 14 you know what i mean i was like can't trust nobody type shit i got and i got that some people anger, that i know will fight with me and that have proved that but it wasn't always like that mm -hmm. always like that and that and it was a friend that that snuck me and did that that weird shit so like after we squabble and shit that was just pretty much that. They obviously tried to be my friend, and I was like, nah. And that's actually, like, now that I think back on that at 14, like, kind of what we were talking about earlier, like, that's, like, kind of a telling story in my life, a repeating thing as far as certain people that I let paint with me. Now you have that intuition to where that, you can that, tell. Yeah, and that's why I'm so crucial now, because I've time and time again let certain people that i'm think like really deep connections you know mental connections friendship connections girlfriend relationship connections and just like somehow somehow shit gets sour bro i don't get it i don't yeah. like i'm still trying to figure out how things just switch i've know? invested a lot of trust and energy into people and then like it, it wasn't a good return investment eventually like shit's just like you know like when you're when you're a big leader like you try to you try to be like yo like you my team i got you mm -hmm. and some people do return that like i got you back but then some people end up just trying to scum you for everything you got yeah just riding riding and then when it's over or they're over it it's like oh, all right when it's their turn when it's their turn to show you that they got you it's like they only got them and it's like not even you don't even be no not even when you ask them to, to to give you back when they just dip they don't even have to not give you the shit back that they owe or or you're owed in compensation or whatever it is <laughs> whether it's on vibes or whatever you know what i mean yeah it's not like really owed it's like you know like if i if, if i got you See, I'm I'm a, I'm a different. But type. that's what I'm saying. That is what that is, though. Because if I got you, then you have to get me when I need it. That's that's kind of In what, a way. The, what the friendship and loyalty agreement is. Yeah. But like, motherfuckers don't even be getting to the point where they have to give you back what you gave them. They just be dipping. Yeah. Because they know that they can't provide that, or they 
think that they like it's it's it, there's obviously many different variables to it in, but in many cases i really only ask for loyalty that's all i ask for you know. too that's 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 literally it um, just be honest with yourself and honest with everything else going around and that's that's the only way i can move because if i if i see certain things moving a certain way then i'm going to i'm going to call it out which is obviously going to start everything and i'll call it out and start the shit and finish it at the same time, but because I'm the one who calls it out, I'm obviously you're the bad guy. Yeah. You're a scumbag. So, so it's a double-edged sword. Like we were talking earlier, everything's a double-edged sword. But what would you rather do? Would you rather be living along with this fake shit, knowing that everything is not move accordingly a hundred, or would you rather call that shit out, whip it in the bud, and have it not be an issue at all? Or potentially just some disagreement that can get fixed. I I protect my peace. It's like sometimes, because either way, sometimes you can peep it and you don't gotta speak it though. But either way, your peace is disturbed because you're thinking about it. Yes. So 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 is it going to be disturbed to the degree of ignore it and I'll deal with it when I think about it or confront it and maybe it's nothing or maybe it's everything. You know what I mean? See, I let my energy tell everything. Like, I don't have to tell someone that I don't fuck with them no more. You know, like if I talk to you, and there, and there, and there's, and there's occasions where like, you know, there's people that I fuck with that because I'm so busy in what I'm doing, I don't see them a lot, mm-hmm. and I'm not always around. But like, people will know by my energy if I really just. Don't fuck with them, you know, like, cause mm-hmm. if I see, if I peep some fuck shit, you know, I'm not going to speak on it, but a lot of time motherfuckers know what they did, mm-hmm. you know, unless it's like a miscommunication, but like when you can really peep that you have the best intentions for someone and they probably don't care, you know, or it's like, or you really fuck with someone like heavy and they just don't fuck with you back. It's like. You know, there's not even really, there's not even really something to say about that. Because you know, you know on the other end that this person that you show showing hella love to is just taking it for granted. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what, what, why even, why even, why would I even come out my mouth to be like, bro, like, that's crazy, bro. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, I protect, I protect my peace by, by surrounding myself and keeping in contact with those that I know have love for me back. Yeah, so pretty essentially just separating from anything that Yeah, no, unless it's some yeah. shit where they where they really did some fuck shit and they gotta get their ass whooped or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Or like, you know, you know, someone yeah, many, many occasions. Then it's like you got you gotta do something about it. But if it's just like people on some funny shit, like like you can you can be funny, but guess what? I'm hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hilarious. Yeah, these lights are fucking like yeah. making my eyes water and shit. I'm about to come back in this bitch with sunglasses. Yo, um, we're gonna take a little a little five minute break. This is a little scumbag gone. We'll be right back. You know how we saw it. I'ma stand on my feet, ten toes down with my chin up, gonna shit my arm. Only got one life, only got one chance to make it, give me the ball If I win, then I win, if I lose, then I learn, make a lesson from my loss I'm out here trying to find my way in the land of the lost What is the cost to live a life you never lived? I'll give anything I can give, tell me what it is I'm getting sick of getting the short end of the stick But it seemed that it's all I could get Stuck in my ways, I tried to change, but nothing got better I'm back on my shit, looking up in the clouds And I'm asking a question, can I live? Sleeping on couches, sleeping on flows I wake up, wanna go back to sleep can't put a band-aid over a cut on your soul That shit bleed way too deep Hello Where ladies and gentlemen, back? we are back from that timely break This is Scumbag Rick, Ricky Hi. Bobby And this is Bugs, but you already knew that And we changed the colors of the lights here Because the vibe needed to switch up And you are now tuned into 103.7 Smooth <laughs> Whoa, that just tapped in That's just Smooth Jazz Smooth Jazz. Yeah, we had to switch the vibes up because this guy took acid. Right there, I'll put a boop. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, what's your favorite thing about that feeling? 
um, I feel like I'm more in tune with the potentials of my mind. Um, I feel like it connects quicker. I, yeah, I feel like I'm able to. I'm more in tune with myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm able to pick up energy, you know, and I think you do that naturally. You do do that naturally, but you do it at a more, more magnified level. Yeah. Um. And There's like, something there. We connected something with this shit, dude. A lot of people they do this shit, and it's like, uh, you know, they're real. Uh, once a lot of people when they pick up energy at such a level, you know, a lot of people get spooked by it. That's why many people only like to take acid like in the comfort of their own house mm-hmm. or with people they're comfortable taking acid with. I'm a mm-hmm. fucking veteran dog. <laughs> Take acid walking fucking downtown Camden <laughs> from the transportation center to Gloucester. <laughs> yeah. Fucking take acid in a fucking room full of wolves, dude. It, it, it's just, you know, I'm... I'm myself mm-hmm. to the highest degree. Not when I'm on this. Not just only you're just when I'm on this. Confident in who you are. Yeah, you know, and, and what situations happen, and you're no, you know that it's just regular, and that's what life is. I'm love. I'm I'm uh, I'm in love with the challenge. That's what I was saying. Anybody who has bad trips on acid, it's it's your brain. It's like there is such thing as bad acid. There is such things, but like if you have a bad trip, it's you, dude. You think yourself not, into it's, everything. It's you, bro. It's sure. you overthinking you, or getting stuck and, you know, you got to climb. Yeah. Just dip your toe in if you can't dive. But you, if you dive in, you better swim the fuck out of there, dude. You can relate acid to regular life because it's like having a bad trip is almost mentally a choice. Mm-hmm. Sometimes subconsciously no, you don't know that. It is. It is. Happiness it is. is a choice. Like, you can... Even when you're Misery sad. Misery loves company, so does happiness. Even when you're sad, you can choose to have positive thoughts, you know. It's okay to feel th- that emotion, but, like, it's it's your thoughts through that emotion that think, like, oh, my Why life is terrible. Why do people romanticize pain so much? Like, they romanticize that willowing, willowing away of, like, like, this happened to me. Like, you don't understand. Like, motherfucker, everybody has shit that no one understands because everybody's dealt with different shit. You know what I mean? Like, you listening? So you can't be so egotistical. Like, you don't know what the fuck I feel. I mean, damn right. I don't. Yeah. It was you. And I'm going to say if, this. If I was you, I'd be you. And, I, and I'm going to say I this. I would be you if I felt what you, yes. you know? Like, but all we can give is perspectives. Exactly. And I'm going to say this. Like, I've had a, I've had a hard upcoming, a tough upcoming, right? You know, I didn't grow sleeping up on couch, I didn't, sleeping on couch, sleeping on floor. Yeah, sleeping and it's like, but for one thing, I don't put myself as a victim, and for another thing, no matter how hard you've had it, there's someone that's had it way harder that'll make you think like, wow, like how the fuck is this person even alive? Like, And I've had the conversations with people and they've told me stuff that they've been through. And I'm like, if I told you the stuff I've been through, you would you would be like, damn. But How there's are you stuff so happy? That people, How are you a nice person? Yeah. And there's stuff that people told me that had me like that. So, like, it's it's there's never... Mm-hmm. Nobody, you haven't had it the hardest, you know. So, like, to to really victimize yourself and you put it, put yourself in a situation like I am who I am because of what I go through. There's two ways to look at that. Yeah, I'm who I am because you can't wear of, that as a badge. Like I, I was, I was literally just saying that the other day. Like, um, a lot of people wear mental health as a personality trait. And like, no, like what you went through is what you went through. That's not who you are. That's what happened and you endured it. And now that turns into a weird manipulative thing yeah. where like, are you, are you trying to use this as sorrow yeah. to like have some sort of one up that you had it harder than me? I'm allowed, I'm allowed to be like it's, this. It's a very thin line of like psychologically what these people are actually doing when they speak about their trauma and how and how people handle it. I'm allowed and, to do this crazy shit because I'm me. I went yeah, through this. Yeah, because like, I went through this. And yeah, and like, and to a degree, I understand it. I understand there's triggers and things that keep mm-hmm. certain people from 
trusting people again. Yeah. And it shows in when, like, for, like, example, like, when you're with someone new and you, like, the last relationship you were in, you got cheated on. So with a new relationship, you're assuming that every time you're not with the John, she's cheating on you or talking to somebody else. That's just a natural response. The way you handle that is what's important. Do you show that insecurity and and bum rush this shit? Like, rush the fucking hut yeah. and shoot it up like, yo, bitch, I know you're fucking around. Or do you chill and yeah. and eat? You have to chill. You, you have, have to. to. I was just about to, to say you that. Have you have to, to you what know, happened like, to you and endure whatever is happening in those zones. In today's generation... When you're speaking on relationships, loyalty is like almost impossible to find, mm -hmm. and it's like you really don't want to step out it's of the only character thing we cherish. because of some. You don't want to step out of character because of someone else's character, mm -hmm. and you know, like a lot of that, sh like you made me do this, cheating, cheating. You dude. made me. You made me do this. Oh my god! Through the media like, and through music, to really go into that rabbit hole, like cheating and 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 doing uh, shit. Is like glorified, you know, like, you know, like traditions is like what, 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 like. But it know. feeds into the human temptation naturally. Like there is yeah. some, like a, there is some weird um, primal shit that like that rides within our bodies that exactly that and gets people off when they do some being wrong an open shit. relation when they do wrong shit, just dude. Being, it gets it gets people like gets the blood going, dude. And it I'm gets, on I'm on some type of time where it's like I'm gonna do me, you do you, like I'm a, I. I, I really haven't see relationships are kind of hard with me. Like I'm not like see I'm, I'm not gonna let myself even, it step out of line. It doesn't have to be like a female male relationship. I'm talking like friendship. Oh shit! What drugs have you done? All right, just uh, psychedelics. I'm gonna start off from in order. What drugs haven't I done? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so weed, alcohol. I've done triple C's. Triple C's, oh acid, my God. Acid. My boy did that. Molly. Did you hold it in your palm to take the stuff that was on, t like, the film on top of the red? Uh, I don't remember. I just you took, just did it. I just took, like, eight or ten of them. Mm. And that was a pretty fun time. Real OGs know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where they would hold hold all those triple C's. And I never did it, but my boy did it. He just held it all in his hand to get, like, the... The coating of the pill off of it because the coating like would get you sick if you took too many because it was at that point because people never knew they, that they knew that they were taking she were scumbags C's. weird gloss so say, when you took fuck, that off and sick. then he took it and apparently he tripped nicotine patches tripping like a lot of nicotine patches yeah I never did them uh so I did that wow. acid mushrooms MDMA so wait what did you say I'm sorry start from the beginning. Weed. Yes. Alcohol. Yes. Triple C's. No. Uh, I've done DMT. Not yet. I'm. I've been waiting to be ready. I'm ready now. But. Uh, acid. Mm -hmm. I think I said that already. Acid again, just in case I didn't. Uh, acid. Acid just for now. Acid. <laughs> acid now. Mushrooms. Uh, I did mushrooms. I did MDMA. I did some stuff that I thought was MDMA, but it was probably meth. Oh, yeah. I th dude, I'm positive everybody's... If you've done Adderall or anything, that's meth. I've never done Adderall. I've never taken Ritalin, pills. Ritalin, Adderall, that's I've done, meth. I've, I've, I've sniffed that cocaine, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, so you didn't do the bad shit. No. The shit that'll kill you. No, no. Anything no. could kill you now, to be fair. Like, everything's cut. But yeah. Unless unless you know who you're fucking with. Yeah, I never did anything that would, like, potentially be the thing that kills me. See, see a lot of things people don't understand. You can get a tester. You can, you can get a drug testing kit. You can test your acid to see if it's acid. You can test That's your true. MDMA sure. to see if it's really molly. And you, so you can know exactly what the fuck you're taking. There really isn't, like, an excuse, you know, uh, unless you don't care what you're taking, you know. You can, d don't take the bad acid, dude. B really get that shit from a trusted person. Oh, no, get everything from a trusted I've person. Been, 
Legit, now you're cracked though. Legit everything. Crack's always gonna be cracked. <laughs> yeah. Unless 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 you get unless you get That's beaten right. or selling you soap. Then yeah, to yeah. To the people that care about you, everything you get, get trust it from your crack them. dealer to give you actual crack. Get it from someone that you fuck with because Yeah. Yep. You don't even like have the to person say you're it. buying the drug from, be like, Would this person care if I die? Real shit. And then the would person he do that, the same stuff he's selling you. The person that that guy does it with, you gotta think, would this person like buy something that would they care you know what I mean? It's like it trickles down like that. That's for real. Drug karma is real too. Very real. Don't if and drug it, karma may, might be the like the realest karma. Ex- yeah, explain that into death. Whether you do a grab and run, whether you sell somebody bunk shit, it's always going to come back to you via you getting robbed, you getting bunk shit, or getting arrested with good shit. Yeah. And then you don't you just have fines and you lose what you had. Like yeah. drug karma is the real Drug karma thing. is crazy. Like don't don't do do good. Like do, <laughs> treat people in the game as you would want them to treat you, you know. Yeah, it's facts. She gets spooky. She gets spooky, she gets dude. Crazy. She gets spooky with she everything. She gets crazy, dude. So, what's your favorite color? Uh, cigarettes. <laughs> What's your favorite breakfast? Uh, cigarettes. No. Yeah. No. I actually smoke black. For the record, I don't smoke cigarettes. I smoke black and milds. You smoke vape. Yeah. I love how it changes colors. Did you notice that? When you're in it, <coughs> it's changing colors. Yeah, yeah. Flares ain't too bad. They don't last that long. But this Thunder Grape flavor is one of my favorite flavor vapes ever in the history. Dude, we're in the future right now. Like, it's so weird to think about this shit. Like, what, like, the futuristic technology of what we're like, smoking right now. If you would have said that there would be, like, a fucking pen that I could smoke marijuana out of when I was 11 years old, I'd have been like, dude. I remember when them shit. Give me that shit yeah, right now. Facts. I remember when them shits first came out. I thought, and I, I was like selling. I was like, "Yo, bro, you want a dab pen?" They're like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Mm-hmm. I was like, "Just take a puff." They were like, just, "I just hit it. I just hit it, right?" Yeah. I did this today. I know what to do. And I was like, "So I just hit it. <laughs> I still hit it today." That's hilarious. Sometimes they got the buttons and shit. But this was ripping. Jesus Christ. I don't even do drugs. Well, I piss clean like four times a week. I think <laughs> I think that might be a wrap. You guys okay. will see this motherfucker around. Do you have any? You, uh, know, you songs? know how he's coming. Do you guys have any sing- You um, guys, I mean you. I got G- a project coming geez, out. Jeez, shout out to this. I got um, a I got a project coming out. It's gonna be on CD. You know, because yeah, I'm a gangster like back. that. Bring it back. Um, it's gonna feature friends, Iceman. Rich Port and Nikki P. Uh, all scumbags scumming along the movement. Fucking, fucking fantastic, talented artists, dude. You gotta tap in with them and be be on the lookout for their projects too. Um, I got my single out called "I'm a Scumbag." I perform that shit everywhere. I fucking even rap that shit at KFC, bro. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You should just keep doing that, wrapping it at all the fast food. Everywhere. Restaurants. Don't don't give them the game though. Oh, well. No, I'm not. I'm not very selfish, dude. If you see something that I'm doing and you think it's a good idea for you to take that shit and run with it, Fact. take that shit and run with it. Let me inspire you. You know, because I'm I'm never gonna run out of ideas. The well's not gonna run dry. <laughs> I got know? that shit on lock. He said exactly. exactly. <laughs> Um, keep doing, <laughs> keep doing the next awesome thing. Facts, so drops are coming. Hey, our drops coming. We gonna get shit going, dude. Cop, yo, cop a skull bag shirt. Ooh. Cop a fucking buggy hoodie, dude. Have yeah, shit all fire. Of, merch is on deck for all of us now. Finally, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, I'm, uh, I'm, I've been consistent. I've been dropping every week for like two years now. But like now, I think um, 
I found my niche, and I think you guys will be excited for what I release every week at this You're point. You're going to love it. So, we got to thank you, dog. Thank you for vibing. Thank you. And um, I'm going to take some for... of that acid right now. Have a good okay. night, guys. What acid? <laughs>